What's up YouTube? In this video I'm going to be talking about DSC and DTC, also known as Dynamic Stability Control and Dynamic Traction Control. I'm talking about how to use them on your Mini Cooper R56. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and stick around. You're going to want to watch this whole video. If you work on your own Mini Cooper, no matter which Mini Cooper it is, check out my Facebook group. It's called Mini Cooper DIY. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Or you can go on Facebook and type in Mini Cooper DIY in the search bar and you can find it that way. Let's get to the video. Okay, most cars, not most, but some cars just came with dynamic stability control and some came with both dynamic stability control and dynamic traction control. So if your button says DSC, you have dynamic stability control. If you're watching the right video. I'm going to explain that. You're going to want to still want to watch this whole video. Um... But if it says DTC, like mine says, that means you have dynamic stability control and dynamic traction control. And I'm going to show you how to use both and how to turn them both off. So first, I'm going to show you where the button is located. Okay, you have to excuse my car. I haven't washed it the inside in a while. But uh, the DTC button is right here. And like I said, if yours says DSC, it's the same button. It's in the same spot. It's on the opposite side of your sport button, right in front of your shifter. Okay, DSC and DTC, depending on what you have, are on by default when you first start your car. And what DSC, there's a couple of things it does. I'm going to list them. List them. The first thing is, if you're, if you're launching your car or taking off fast, it's going to prevent your tires from spinning. It's also going to make your car slower if you're trying to race, if you're on a drag strip or something. Uh, because it t the way it make the way it keeps your tires from spinning is by taking power away from the front tires. So if you don't have any power, you don't have enough power to spin the tires, then you won't spin them. So normal everyday driving, if you're just you know going stop and go, you're, like even like in the rain or something, and you just want to be able to drive without your tires spinning every time you go anywhere, uh, just leave your D DSC or DTC on, and uh, you're good to go you know, in that instance. The next thing that it does is if you're coming around a corner and it just notices that you're you're not stable coming around that corner, it'll break, it will cut engine power for one, and it the same way it does when you're losing traction going in a straight line. But it also, it'll break, it'll uh, individ apply the brakes individually to each of the wheels in a, a way that'll make you go the direction that you're trying to go. And as long as you're not doing something stupid, like, you know, trying to race in the rain on a public street, you know, it actually, it works pretty good. You're, you're, you're going to be like, well, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to crash. Probably you're less likely to crash if you, with the, the DSC, it actually works really good. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. The few times that I have used it. Okay. So DSC it encompasses these five things. The anti-lock brake system, the electronic brake force distribution, brake assist, cornering brake control, and hill start assist. If you have both DSC and DTC and you turn DSC off but leave DTC on, you'll still have all of those things except to a lesser degree dtc just it's the same almost the same as dsc but to a lesser degree so basically it's like turning a percentage of like half of it off but not half of the functions half of how sensitive the functions are to deactivate dsc remember your button will say dsc if that's all you have or dtc you're just going to press this button until you see that light on the dash. It's either going to say DSC or DTC. Mine says DTC because I have dynamic traction control on my car. It's also going to say either DSC or DTC on your tachometer right there for a few seconds. And then eventually it'll turn off and you'll be able to use it for your speedometer like I do. The times you're going to want to deactivate your DSC is going to be anytime you have snow chains on your car or if you're, let's say you're going to go up a, a hill that has snow on it and slippery, you want to deactivate all your nannies just so that you can, 
your car won't, you need the power to get up the hill. So sometimes you need to spin tires in order to get up a hill. And if you're in the snow, you definitely need to do that. So like I said, anytime, like if you're, or if you're stuck in the snow, like in a little ditch and you need to rock out of it, you want to turn your, your DSC or DTC off in order to do that. Now to reactivate your DSC, remember it's going to say DSC right here if that's all you have. Or if you have DTC, that's going to say DTC like me. Um, all you got to do is press the button one more time and you'll see if the light goes off. That's on. And when you press the button, it'll turn right back off. And now, you, now your DSC is back on. Now with the DTC, like I said, when you first start your car, you're going to have both, if you if you have DTC, you're going to have both your, your dynamic stability control and your dynamic traction control. They're just on. Follow that. If you want to just turn off the DSC, do what I just showed you. Um, and, then, you know, then you're, you're going to be fine in, in the same instances that you would be if you didn't have the, the traction control. But if you if you do have DTC and you're driving on a snowy road that hasn't been cleared. You, it's, it's advisable in the manual to turn your DSC off, but leave the DTC on. So you're only gonna do what I just showed you. Press the button until the light comes on and you're good and drive like that until you get to a place where you're on regular pavement and then, you know, put your, your stability control back on. Or, you know, like me, I always drive with it, with both of them all the way off because, you know, I just like to, I like to know when my brakes are going to be applied because I'm the one applying them. But for most drivers, you're, you're going to want to have it, you know, in default mode when you start, like how it is when you start your car. So what you're going to do, so if you get on a snowy road, like I just said, and you're driving, you're like, okay, it's kind of slippery. Turn your, your DSC off by pressing the button. You'll see the light come on but your dynamic traction control is still on, which means you still have those those uh, nannies, but just to a lesser degree so that you're able to drive in the snow. Sometimes you're gonna get to a point, let's say you're you're trying to rock out of the snow and you just, your, your car is cutting too much power, even with the uh, traction control, the DTC on and the DSC off. And you just gotta, you have to turn them both off in order to get out. What you're gonna do is you're gonna same thing, but instead of instead of just pressing the button, you're gonna press it and you're gonna hold it for three to five seconds. And what'll happen? I'll show you in just a second. And I'm also before before you leave, I want to tell you a couple of anecdotal things that I've found out that also happens when you turn or either leave the traction control systems on or turn them off, and some stuff that some racers have found. And they've even talked to many of USA about, and it, it's actually true. It's just not in the manual. So keep watching for that. Okay, so when you first are getting in your car, I don't, I don't have my car on. I just have the key on, engine off. But uh, that's why you have to see the check engine light. But when you first want to turn it off, like I said, you can just press it once, and it'll do that and do that. But if you want to turn it all the way off, you're going to press it. That'll come on. And then you keep watching on your tack until you see this indicator right here. And then also that will turn off. It's about, it's about three to five seconds. Okay, and the reason I drive with those off, well, that's not, that's not the main reason, but one of the reasons why I drive with those off is I've noticed that if you leave your stability control on and you're driving spiritedly like I drive, and you come up to a stop sign where it's bumpy, You'll feel your ABS, you know, your ABS kicks on way sooner. And a lot of people think that ABS means it stops your car faster. That's not what ABS does. What ABS does is it keeps your your brakes from locking. Now, if you think about it, if you take a wheel, what's going to be harder to, to move? One that's rolling or one that's not rolling? The one that's not rolling is going to stop your car faster. So being in a skid doesn't mean that you're or not skidding doesn't mean your car stops sooner it just means that you could still control your car easier while you're still moving but you will still move further and if you're on a bumpy road such as the instance where i've noticed it the most on my way to work there's a hill i'm going down 
and I got to make a sharp right. And I have to be on my brakes. If I have my traction control, my DSC and my T DC DTC off, and I'm coming through there, normal drive-in, you know, I hit the brakes and I turn the corner. I don't even notice that the road's kind of bumpy right there. But a few weeks ago, I was like, you know what? When I was actually researching for this video, I decided I was gonna, you know, I was gonna leave everything on. And I was just gonna drive to work and just see how if if I even noticed it. Well, when I got to that corner, which isn't that far away, maybe 20 minutes from here, I, I have an hour drive to work. But uh, I come down, I'm slowing down, I'm driving normal, just how I normally drive, and I'm coming down and I hit the brakes, and I don't make the corner. I'm and luckily there wasn't a car coming because I was into the other lane because when I hit those bumps the analog brakes kicked in you know they're way more sensitive so I just kept going and I didn't really slow down as much as I normally do when I hit the brakes in the same spot to make that corner so uh you know you got to drive a lot more careful with with the ABS than you do without it so when you have the dynamic traction or stability control on your ABS is fully functional when you hit it the one time like I showed you it'll dumb it down a little bit which is probably good for most people if you turn it all the way off you still have ABS don't get me wrong you still have it but it's a lot more livable for people who drive spiritedly than it is when you're still when you still have your, your stability control on and also with the dynamic still stability control when I was researching for this video I was reading a bunch of threads on North American motoring uh, it's a forum on, on online, but uh, there was people talking about autocross, and one guy in particular was saying that, you know, he he drives at a championship level. He's a good autocrosser, and uh, he was saying that any time that he got into a corner to where he was pulling a tire, a rear tire off the ground, his engine would cut power for like thirty seconds. And, uh, you know, for most of us, that's not an issue. It's never been an issue for me. I have all-season tires and I'm driving on the street. I have pretty stock suspension other than my, other than my sway bars and, and camera plates. So, you know, if you're, if you're like me, that's never going to come into play. But once you start, like, doing coilovers and you do a lot of stuff in your car and then you start taking it to the track, that's something to think about, too. And you can't turn that off. So you're going to have to figure out when you're doing your suspension... A way to keep those tires on the ground because back tire comes up power gets cut off and it you know it's supposedly what i guess the guy called mini of usa and and uh it's supposed to happen and tell you if your power gets cut off you lift your foot off the gas and then you then you'll have power again but he was saying that sometimes it would last you know 30 seconds and he'd just lose a bunch of time in his race ended up selling the car because of it and like i said earlier if you no matter which mini cooper you drive check out my facebook group mini cooper diy and if you like this video please hit the subscribe button and also give it a thumbs up if you didn't like this video give it a thumbs down and i'll catch you in the next video